Hi everyone, welcome to part two of our mystery of the alphabet introduction. And in our previous class, we delved into the meaning of what otiot means, what the word means ot, which means to bring about, means a miracle, and it means a sign. And we spoke about the 22 letters as being very, very significant in their shape, being significant in the energy, in their vibrational energy that they transmit in the world. And we left off speaking about the 10 utterances, that God created the world through 10 utterances called Asara Ma'amarot, 10 sayings. Now, in the, Hebrew, in the Hebrew language, we've got various expressions for the word to say, basically. And Ma'amarot is one of them. Ma'amar means to say. There are 10 utterances that God created the world with. Now, there's also what is called the Asara Dibrot, the, the, the Ten Commandments. And the Daber is also a word which means to speak, to convey. What's the difference between Omer and Medaber? So our sages tell us that the word Omer is a little bit more of a uh, feminine type of a uh, expression, Omer. And it's got the word aim inside of it. Asara ma'amarot, aim. And the and the bear has to do when God spoke to the Israelites on Mount Sinai and says, the bear of B'nai Israel, you should speak to them. And then they're actually more harsh types of sayings. So the Ten Commandments are different than the Ten Utterances. They're similar in the sense that they're ten. But there is the above nature reality of the number 10, the expressions of godliness within the world, which is above nature. And that requires a, trans a, a, a transitioning of oneself from being limited and confined to the, uh, to the physical laws of nature to now being above nature. And that requires a level of really deep discipline. So the idea of Asara Dibrot, the Ten Commandments, has to do with connecting to the above nature reality. And so in the form of expression, we've got Omer, it's what I say. What I say is maybe ex external. But then it's got the word dab Davar, le Daber, like we said in last class that a king is actually called a Davar. And someone who's a speaker is really conveying their deepest depth in, the, in, what, they're act, in, in what they're saying. And actually in the Ten Commandments it says, Anochi, I am God who... I am God who gave you the Torah. And so Anochi is the acronym Ananafshik Tavit Yehavit. I've gave, given you my, my, my nefesh, my soul through the, through the Torah. And so the word Daber means to really express something very deep, something very, very profound within the individual. Now there's another word which means Lehagid, to say, to say over. And Lehagid it comes from the word he, in Hebrew, a sinew. A gid means a sinew. And lehagid is sometimes a very harsh level of expression. So while davar is a stronger way of conveying, but it's still, it's internal. And it's conveying something very deep inside. While, while the word lehagid is to basically say it as it is. Like sometimes when you say it as it is to a person, so it may not sound so nice and polished, but you just say it. And it's not so, um, it's not as refined and maybe accepted by the others. Just like a sinew, a sinew is very, very harsh. And lahagid means to really portray and to say something in a very um, direct form. And then there's the word, um, Le saper, which comes from the word sphira. And sphira, we know that the ten spherot are connected to the ten utterances, as we mentioned in the last class, that the ten spherot and the ten utterances and the 22 letters come together to express what we know as the anabekoach, the, 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 the godly uh, name of God, the 42 letter name of God that really uplifts the confines of the world. 
And so the, the word sfira, lesaper, means to say over, the, to convey, and to say a story. And so what's the difference between saying a story and being direct in what you say, or conveying a deep idea, or to say something over which is maybe a little bit external. To say over a story, everyone loves a story. Because a story, you could hear it, you could listen to it, and you could connect to it on your terms, on, on whatever depth that you have in and former level of, of understanding um, that you can connect to what the story is conveying, the people in the story and, and whatnot. So it says that the 10 spherot are expressions, are forms of expressions that God expresses himself in the world. And it relates in the wordless saper to say over is connected to the word sipur, which is a story, and it's connected to the word sefer, which is a book. So God is the is saying over, and a sofer means an author. So we're connected to the author, we're connected to the book via the um, uh, the the relations the, the 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 relationship that is formed through the story and that's almost like a, a level of vulnerability when someone says a story about themselves you know I went through this or I had that happen to me in my life so you like you're you're listening to that story and you you're like wow you know this person is is more human than I thought and I could connect to what they're saying to who they are because they're conveying something and I can connect to the person, to the sofer and the, and the kind of book that they're kind of like um, living, the, the script sort of speak that, they're, that, that their life is on. You could connect to it via the sipur, via the story which is conveyed. So the sfirot are expressions of God within the world. So the Hebrew language is super profound and you know all these words really mean to um, to express and that's what the Hebrew alphabet really is all about is expressing and that takes us to the pathways of expression because in the um, in our ways of expression it says that we, there are 22 main uh, uh, teeth uh, that we have in our in our mouth not the molars and whatnot that really are able to cut and to express um, ideas which are um, which which begin from almost an ethereal place within our mind within our psyche and as we said in the last class there are letters on the thought level and as we draw them down we're almost we're able to like you know connect to those letters and bring them into a formalized way of expression what we're doing is we are we are conveying what we uh, what we want to say from the ethereal sense um, in this in this world, and this really is the epitome and the essence of what man is all about. We are created as humans. We're called the min hamidaber, the one who's speaking, because in our ways we're different than the than the rest of the animal kingdoms and 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 the other forms of life in the in the ability that we have to convey. So it's not just that we have, I think, therefore I am, or, you know, we've got, you know, great, you know, intelligence and whatnot, but we're able to take that intelligence and bring it about into a formalized way of expressing ourselves. And throughout ancient cultures, the ability to formulate what we know into speech and into writing and reading and writing and once reading and writing became a reality in the world such as the the ancient uh, Egyptians were the first ones to really bring that about and the the Aztecs and you know had that and the Assyrians Assyrian language and whatnot once that was for and, and the Chinese of course as well once that was brought down into a concrete way so now it became uh, the world changed. The world changed forever because now we could convey ideas, we could take ideas, we could interconnect with each other, and we could gain from each other. And that's a huge, that's that, that that's a game changer for for world history and for mankind to be able to really. 
take ideas and to take how do we take ideas we can't read other people's minds it's through those ideas being expressed either by speech or by being being written down in a for in a, in, a, in a written form and so so too on the godly level god is infinite as we learned in our classes on the ein Sof, on the infinite light of god and the whole tzim tzumim, the, the condensations God's expression in the world is likened to that of speech. He expresses himself and he, created, he creates the world constantly via speech. That vibrational frequency is a limited, limiting uh, characteristic and, and a trait that from the infin infinity of God. But at the same time, through that limitation, we are now able to have that space and we're able to have that connection with our maker, with the creator. And so the Alter Rebbe tells us in chapter uh, 21 in Tanya and in various other places that the form of speech, that the idea of speech, that God's speech is, is, is happening, and Baal Shem Tov says happening all the time, when we understand that in the way of that God is expressing himself and his speech is not independent of what is being expressed. The expression is constantly there, just like man expresses himself or herself, and there is a, there's a revelation, there's an expression that comes through, through that. So too we know, so to speak, the heart of the Creator by knowing what is being expressed in the world. And so the, the, our sages call, the, the, the world itself are called, going back to the ten utterances, are called mile de idiota. It's called like the like expressions of simple expressions, so to speak. That for God it's simple to like create, you know, the ten utterances. And in, and in chapter 20 of Tanya and, and, and in, very, in chapter 33, the Altarbi really tells us that God could speak infinite amounts, but he decides to speak in 10 utterances that tells us how infinite, you know, how much more God could say. And so they're, they're, those are called like, it's like small change, you know, compared to what God is, is capable of expressing. But the deeper level of speech is the speech which is above the world, which is called, there's a speech which is below the, below the sun, like King Solomon says, that everything under the sun has has been there and and and, and its history re repeats itself right ain kol chadash tachat hashem there's nothing new underneath the sun but above the sun above the world and going back to that idea of the 10 um, the 10 dibrot the 10 um, commandments on that level there is that's already much greater because we connect to the to the speech and we connect to almost like the the, the, the soul of, of, and the will of the Creator, as we mentioned before, Anochi, I am, Ana Nafshik David Yavid, I've given my soul via the Torah. That is way greater, that is way higher than the simple speech of Mile de Hidyota called the speech of the Ten Utterances. So, speech connects us to the speaker, and therefore, um, we know about the speaker because um, because of what they say and how they say it. So now that this brings us to the concept, the very fascinating concept of gematria. Gematria literally it, co it comes from a Greek Greek word means geometrica, which means ge uh, geometry connects the geometry, which means numbers you know, the science of numbers. And gematria is the numerology of the Hebrew alphabet. That each letter in the Hebrew alphabet, we have a letter Aleph. So the letter Aleph is the number one. The letter Bet is the number two. The letter Gimel is the number three. Dalid is four, and so on, up until we get to the letter Yud, which is 10. Now, past Yud, we count in tens. Yud, and then we have Kaf, and that's already 20. And then Lamed is 30, and so on. And then we go all the way to the letter Kuf, which is now 100. And so Kuf, 
Reish is 200, Shin is 300, Tuf is 400. And so when we want to calculate, we, we basically put together these numbers or we take multiple amounts of, for example, if we're counting in the thousands, so we would take from a number, uh, uh, Tuf, Tuf, uh, Shin, or whatever it is that, that the number is, and we would calculate it through that. Now, what does the gematra really mean? What is the gematra really telling us? So gematra isn't like some cute idea that, oh, it's, it's got that number and that number, that's amazing. No, God created the, wor the world through the Hebrew alphabet. That means that there is an interconnection between, the, there's an innate interconnection between everything in creation. And now we're able to know that through the similarity that many of the numbers have with each other. So the great Kabbalists knew that there is a connection. There's an innate connection. They knew that through the study of, of this profound wisdom of Kabbalah. And then they wanted to bring it about in a much more of a, a tangible way. And so they knew that there is, either they knew it, or they, they were able to really investigate it on a deeper level and find the similarity uh, between, between concepts and, 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 and numbers. And they were able to bring together um, uh, uh, the, the, the correlations between these concepts or these items, or, or if it's, or if it's um, um, even, even metaphysical beings. Um, such as um, such as angels have numerology to them, and various angels are connected to various even physical aspects. Like for example, Malach in in the the numerology of Malach is ninety one, which has to do with ninety one in numerology is a very important numero numerology, which it, which has twenty six and sixty five, God's infinite name of of the tetragrammaton, and. 65 is, an, is, is the name Adnai, and that relates and it connects the two. So an, an angel is able to connect the spirit, which is above the, the, the angel, and draw it down. And now it's the same numerology, actually, as Ilan, which is 91 as well. And Ilan is the tree, a tree of life basically connects to the, the physical world and it connects up to the, the highest heavens and you know as with it with its tree and what it relates to and so the on a spiritual level Ilan Ilan is is connecting to the to the to the earth which which the earth is an analogy of what is beyond us um, on the on the realm of Malchut and then what is revealed within this world and just to go on with that 91 idea, that's the, uh, that's the numerology of Amen. Amen is when we say amen, amen to something. We're like, yes, amen. You know, what does that mean? So Amen is, is a great, um, a very powerful uh, um, a word, because, you know, and, it, and it's not just um, affirming something that someone says, but it actually connects and it says in the Talmud that someone says Amen, it's greater than the person who even says the blessing. Why is that? Arizal tells us that Amen is 91, which take these two, takes these two holy names of Yudke Vavke and Adnai and connects the two, the above nature and the nature. So someone hears a blessing, they say Amen, they connect the above nature reality and the within nature reality. So that's just one example of of a very important example of, of the power of numerology to, to, to really correspond and to go through so many concepts at the same time. Now, the, um, there are different types of numerology that we should know about. There is something which is called a milui. In Hebrew, milui means to fill in. And that means that when we have, for example, the letter Aleph, so the letter Aleph in numerology is one, right? But we could figure it out. We could say that actually the letter Aleph is a letter Yud over there and Yud over there, and together it's 26 if we figure it out that way. Now the Milui tells us like Aleph, if we would sound it out, enunciate it, then we would get this. We would get Aleph, Lamed, and then the Pe, which together is 
and one, right? So we would get basically one, 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 which is a very powerful number because one, one, one is true on the, on the hundreds, on the tens, and on the ones, it all has that one which is there. And the letter Aleph is the number one on all realms, on the realms of the, which brings us into an idea of what the what singular number, double digits and triple digits and thousands as well, what they represent. So they represent higher forms of consciousness. The single digits are the single digits which are, you know, which are more like we would say in this world. They're, they're limited, they're small. And the, the double digits are now within the world of what we call Bina. They're, they're above, they're more understand, they're, they're, they're Chochma and Bina, like it says about Sarah. Sarah was, when she passed away, she was 120, um, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, 120 20 represents the Chochma and Bina, and then she was um, seven. 127, seven represents the, 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 the singular numbers. But the letter, but the hundreds are now the, the levels of what we call arich, like above nature. They are, they are the, the, meta, they're the metaphysical. And when we go to the thousands, that's even more. That's almost the, le, le, that's the realm of Atik that's really above nature. So that's one way of understanding it. There is another Kabbalistic tradition that actually we go the other way that the more that more, as as we go more to the qualifying singular element then we're we're really quantifying the number itself and so when we get to the number one we're really qualifying the essential truth the kernel of truth on the highest level and as we're going to the multiple digits we're going to more of a condensed level of uh of expression which really is it tells us what what uh, gematria is 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 all about because the, because aleph is one, bet is two, and we get to the letter tough. It's four hundred, which says the the Israelites were meant to be in Egypt for four hundred years, representing the four hundred levels of concealment, and it's con it's a condensation of the number one on very on on a very extreme level. So the number one. So looking at it that way, the number one is the most is, is the most clear. When we have Aleph, it's like it's like you know it's just this level of clarity. And we have Bet, it's 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 less clarity because it's Aleph twice. So you sort of don't see the Aleph clearly in and of itself. And then you go on and on to the letter Tough, and then it goes to level thousands and so on where it becomes more opaque and more distant from its source. So that's a different way of viewing um, the, uh, what we call uh, the, 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 the singular tens and hundreds. But going back to the concept of milui, you know, so it's understanding that each letter, we, if, if we spell it out, it's got an inherent numerical value. So the, the word itself has the value, but then the word, if, we, if it's spelled out, has a numerical value. So this is very, very important when it comes to the expression of God's names. For example, the 45 letter name of God, what is the 45 letter name of God? So we've got the letter Yud and the letter K, and I'm writing K, not the letter He, and the letter Vav, and then the letter once again, case. So when we spell it out, we have the U ten and five and six, right? And then and then five together is twenty six. But when we spell it out completely, so then we've got um, Yud, which is Yud Vav Dalid, which is actually twenty. And then we've got a, a, a hey. And if we spell a hey out, we could spell it out with an Aleph or with a hey. Um, and that makes a difference because if we spell it out with the letter Aleph, so that so then we've got um, six over here, and then if we've got Vav, we could spell it out with a Vav Vav, which is twelve, and then a Hey over here, which is again the number six. So all together, we would we would get. Um, 
and we would add the letter Aleph over here, that would make it uh, 13. So we would get basically the 45 letter name of God if it's spelled out with the letter Aleph. Now, if we spell it out with the letter Hey, then we would get um, the 52 letter name of God. And if we'd spell it out with uh, Yud, so you'd have Yud, Hey, and then have, have the Yud in it, and then Vav without the Yud, and then hey with a yud, that we would get the 63 letter name of God called Sag, but then it, we would get the 72 letter name of God if it would be added to the letter uh, Vav. So it would be Vav, Yud, Vav, and together 72 letter name of God. So this is called the Milui, and there's different, there's Milui of Milui and, and so on and so forth, which is basically this condensation of, God, of the godly frequency which is found within everything. So when we understand the, 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 the roots, we understand a lot of the basic names the Hebrew, in the Hebrew language, especially those that relate to the names of God, um, then we understand a lot more about the difference as it expresses itself within the physicality, which is connected to the letter ban, the more of the spirituality, which is um, which is the the chachma, which is the letter, which is God's name, which is ma 50, uh, uh, 45. And then there would be a higher level of physicality, which is sag, which is the root of physicality, which is within the body. And then the 72 letter name of God, which is also gematria chesed, 72, right? Again, that correlation, that's God's name expressed, um, is, um, is, is, is the root of, 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 all of, the, of all of the names. So the medially, is, is found within everything, within our, within, within all names. If we choose to really go further with that, so that's one way of understanding gematria. Another way is called a misbar katan, a small way of understanding gematria. That means that, for example, when we want to take the word uh, kise, okay, so kise is twenty, sixty, and one. So we got we have 81. So mispar katan would be if we would add the numbers together, we would get the small, which is called a small number, which is the number nine. And it very much quantifies it. So for example, Rabbi Avram Azulai says that Sfat is so if we take uh, Sfat, right, we have um, we have 90, we have 80. And we've got 400, that's 570. Um, and so, so in the uh, a certain form of Misbar Katan, we would get, um, we would get basically the number um, 12, or that's one way of looking at it, or the zero would be added and it would be made into 22, which he says that over there, that the 22 letters of the alphabet are very much intertwined with Tzfat itself, with the city and the learning of, especially the inner learning of Kabbalah is found in the city of Tzfat. So that's an example of a Mispar Katan, just quantifying the number, crunching it, and it's got an inherent value to it right there. Um, and then there's what is called Atbash. Atbash is basically where we have the letters of the Hebrew alphabet, um, We've got the first letter and then the last letter. We've got the second letter and then we've got the second to last letter. We've got the third letter and then we've got the second to last letter, right? And we've got, and so we go like that. So basically it becomes uh, interchanged. So basically it's in code word. There is a coding that is found, and in Atbash we find that there is a hidden, there is a hidden meaning within a word because the, the letters are really alluding to another letter. So it's an it's a code word basically, and in Sfat, for example, right, taking that example of Sfat, we've got the word over here for um, 
Iva. Iva literally means desired. And it goes back to the word, um, kibach, to, the, to the verse, Kibachar Hashem B'Tzion, that God shows Tzion. Iva Lemoshev, desire to be there. The word desire brought down in the books that Tzvat is connected to the word desire, that God desired to be, dwell within this, um, within the city. Um, so that's, um, in short, the idea of Atbash. So we've got different ways of permutations in Gematria, a fascinating way of really understanding what the inherent value of a word means and how we can understand that all words are really connected in their numerology uh, on their on their numerical level because essentially the world was created through this this frequency of of the alphabet and through numbers and so we've got this almost mathematical way of understanding um, words and understanding God's ways within the a very scientific way so the great Kabbalists were really in many ways mathematicians they really were able to just quickly you know do the numbers on on, on numerology connect them and meditate on numbers as they relate to spiritual concepts and uh, and connect um, on, 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 on these levels so uh, extremely profound way of, of connecting to Torah connecting to the alphabet and uh, and gives us a little bit of an inkling a little bit of an insight uh, into the into the hidden world of the of the of, of gematria which is really a whole world in and of itself so with that we have completed our first class our first introduction to the hebrew alphabet i hope you enjoyed and i and um and in our next class we are going to go into the vowels and their very significant uh meaning uh, in the whole expression of the uh, of, of the language of the Hebrew alphabet and it on, the, on the spiritual level and how uh, God expresses himself through the, uh, the vowels and what they mean and, and the tense virot that are connected to the, to the vowels. Wishing you a beautiful day with many blessings.